Hello and welcome to vlog number 34. Today I'm going to talk about the Parkinson's medications, levodopa and dopamine agonists. The current approach to medication in Parkinson's disease is to treat the symptoms and is focused largely on restoring dopaminergic function in the striatum, which is a critical component of the motor and reward systems in the brain. Levodopa is still the most effective treatment for PD symptoms. It is metabolised by the brain into dopamine, replacing the body's depleted supply. Long term use of levodopa can result in dyskinesia, fluctuation in motor symptoms and shorter periods of effectiveness. Also, levodopa has been shown in the lab to be toxic to dopaminergic neurons. In the body it is possible that it would lead to the formation of free radicals that would damage remaining neurons and potentially make the condition worse. My neurologist denied that this could happen when I questioned him about it, but I have read about this on a number of occasions now, and most recently in an article published in the Journal of Neurology, Neurosurgery and Psychiatry. I'm sure that the medical profession are heartily sick of patients checking up on the effects and side effects of medicines that they are prescribing, and really wish we would just shut up and take our meds. At the end of the day, it's my body that these drugs are going into, and I'd like to make an informed decision as to whether or not I want to take them. UK guidelines suggest that treatment with levodopa should be delayed for as long as possible, provided that symptom relief can be achieved through the use of other drugs, such as dopamine agonists. When I was first diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, the first thing my neurologist did was to prescribe me dopamine agonists which I initially decided not to take. I would heard and read about various nasty side effects of PD meds and I wasn't encouraged by the information that my neurologist had disclosed, saying that if the tablets made me feel ill he could prescribe another medication to help with that, and also outlining the obsessive compulsive behaviour side effect and warning my wife and I to keep an eye out for it. So what are dopamine agonists and what are the side effects? Dopamine agonists are a different class of drugs to levodopa. Levodopa is converted to dopamine in the brain, whereas dopamine agonists mimic the effects of dopamine without having to be converted. They are often the first drug to be prescribed for Parkinson's, but are also used in later stages of the disease in conjunction with levodopa to help the levodopa be more effective, thus reducing the dosage of levodopa required. There are a number of different drugs that act as dopamine agonists, but the two that I've been prescribed are Rapinarol and Promipexol. I was fortunate in that my neurologist explained the worst side effects to me and screened me for susceptibility to impulsive behaviour prior to prescribing the agonist to me. But over 50% of consultants don't screen their patients and I think that this is unacceptable. Statistics show that up to 17% of patients will experience this side effect. And although that's a fairly small number, it is not insignificant, particularly when you consider the consequences of impulse control disorder. There are many documented instances of people who run up enormous debts as a result of uncontrollable gambling or shopping, let alone those with broken marriages resulting from hypersexuality. There are even those who have ended up behind bars as a result of impulse control disorder that was brought about by these medications. There's one chap on the Parkinson's UK website who says that these side effects destroyed his life. He went from having a successful career and great lifestyle to being homeless and living on the streets in just 14 months. This is a well known and extremely serious side effect and I'm astonished that there isn't greater emphasis on it. I looked on the Parkinson's UK website and the National Parkinson Foundation website and, although Parkinson's UK have a section dedicated to impulsive and compulsive behaviour, on the section of the site that is dedicated to dopamine agonists, it is hidden away as a one-liner towards the bottom of the section about side effects. Similarly, the National Parkinson Foundation has it as the last in a list of just six stated side effects. The Parkinson's Disease Clinic and Research Centre lists the following side effects. Drowsiness, nausea, vomiting, dry mouth, dizziness, leg swelling, orthostatic hypertension, 
a form of low blood pressure that happens when you stand up from sitting or lying down. Confusion, hallucinations, psychosis and impulse control disorder. Wikipedia lists about 20 common side effects. It's difficult to know what to believe, isn't it? Additionally, after long-term use of dopamine agonists, a withdrawal syndrome may occur when dosage is reduced or discontinued. And possible side effects of this include anxiety, panic attacks, unease or dissatisfaction with life, depression, irritability, suicidal thoughts, fatigue, nausea, vomiting, sweating and drug cravings. For some these symptoms are short-lived, but others may experience them for months or even years. I realised that if we considered all of the side effects of all of the medicines that we are prescribed, then we probably wouldn't take any of them, and in fact I don't. But I do think that when weighing up the benefits of taking a particular medication, equal consideration should be given to the possible negative effects of that medication, and a decision made on whether or not to take that medication based upon its likely impact upon your quality of life. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or have a topic that you'd like me to cover in future vlogs, just leave me a message in the comments and I'll do my best to respond. Have a great week. See you next Friday.